Hi, everyone. I am back. I have two big things that I'm going to share with you. One, I'm going to give you an update about the TED Talk. And two, I want to talk to you about why the seven good reasons to feel like an imposter actually matters. If you have not seen my whole series breaking down the seven good reasons to feel like an imposter, please go back and watch those. They are childhood messages, working in isolation, doing a creative field, being a learner, um, being a stranger in a strange land. Um, there's so many good reasons to feel like an imposter. And then I'm after I tell you about that, because I'm all fired up today, I will uh, share with you my TED Talk update. So first, what I want to say, I'm a little more glammed up than usual because I'm about to speak to Google about um, and give them my overcoming imposter syndrome talk. With when I was going over the material again, you know, it reminded me of a conversation I had with my best friend, shout out to Alicia, who once said, you know, there's the what, but then there's the so what, like, so you know this information about seven good reasons to feel like an imposter, like, so what, why does that matter? She didn't ask me this question. This is just where I went with it. And the so what is because those reasons messages from childhood working alone working in a in a environment that has a high value for perfectionism and is highly critical of any missteps being the only woman in the room being the only person of color in the room uh, having to create something that's never been there before, having to learn something new all of these things are absolutely not a reflection of you, your skill set, your knowledge, your capabilities. And when you understand the seven good reasons to feel like an imposter, you're better equipped and better able to separate what is this about me and like where are my growing edges and what do I need to learn from other people. Because there's going to be a lot of people in your life who maybe doubt you, who maybe think you can't do things, but that is not yours. Sometimes that's a reflection of the patriarchy. Sometimes it's a reflection of, you know, you're the only person of color, or you're the only woman, or you're the only insert marginalized community in the whole thing. And so you have to prove yourself more, right? But that is not a reflection of who you are and what your skill set is. And when you can understand those lenses, then you can start to look at it through those lenses. If you're suffering from crippling self-doubt, if imposter syndrome is taking over, you can look at it through the lens of, am I working alone a lot? Have I been collaborating with anyone or am I all up in my head? Am I having to learn something new? Oh yeah, learning is hard. Am I the only enter marginalized community that works for this company? Ah, okay. Maybe that's why I'm feeling this way. Is it the, the nature of the work that is, or the nature the culture of the, of the company? Ah, okay. That's not me. Because when we can separate some of that stuff, then you can be left with like, oh, okay, that's the not me stuff. And here's where I actually am. Here's where my skills actually are. Here's where my abilities actually are. Here's where my growing edges actually are. That becomes a critical distinction because it can give you some space between how you're being in the world and the imposter syndrome that can really shut everything down. Okay. That is what I offer you today. So now let me give you a TEDx update. So for some of you who know, who've been following me on Facebook, uh, the TEDx talk was approved. Let me give you some details. I will be talking. Um, so it got approved. Now my job is to practice, practice, practice. So if you want to be a part of any of those practice sessions, then make a comment down below or send me a message um, because I would love to have you there. Number two, it's happening in January. The date is yet to be determined. And um, number three, it's happening in the Seattle area. And so um, 
that's that it's going to be happening at Cascadia College. So Cascadia College sometime in January. Let me know if you want to be a part of my rehearsals and the, the rehearsals will be scheduled. They're not scheduled now because I'm about to give a talk to Google today. I'm about to give a talk to 100 people in New York State tomorrow. Um, I'm trying to get through this week and make sure that I can show up powerfully for my commitments. And then I will be putting um, putting the other dates uh, for rehearsals. And I would love, I just, I want to be able to practice and I want to be able to get feedback. So yes. And yes, Eric, TEDx, let's go. I'm so excited. And oh, you may be wondering, what am I going to be talking about? This is another reason why I'm fired up is because um, the working title is Can Self-Doubt Lead to Confidence? Looking at how can self-doubt, how can that uncertainty be used as a tool that can help and support and guide you versus a weapon that can keep you down, keep you small and be harmful. So that is the premise of the talk. How can or can self-doubt lead to uh, confidence? And that's what I'll be talking about, which is maybe why I'm extra fired up about today, because like a lot of those self-doubts, they're not about you. They're about other people um, or situations. So anyway, that's my update. I'm going to go ahead and get ready for my talk because it's happening soon. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Again, if you want to be a part of um, anything, send me a message. You can send it via my website. And if you like this video or any other videos, it is always helpful for me if you like it, if you make comments, and if you share it. All right. I will see you all next week. Bye.